Alright, let's do this. Hopefully everything's okay. I have put a noise filter on my microphone, so hopefully hopefully that should uh, alleviate some of the noise from the computer. Um, I'm drinking tonight as well. I've got a WKD to start and I've got half a bottle of wine. So. I've kind of become a teenage girl because I've started really enjoying these. I don't know why. Okay. Um, welcome guys. Happy Thursday. Um, hi Mr. G, hi Andy, Esden, Colt, Steps, Vegeta, Igvalada. Uh, hi guys. So, I thought tonight rather than do a, a normal game guys, set, we'd do another one of these uh, workshops on, on making uh, making the rain effect. It seems to have, seems to have gained uh, quite some praise on Twitter, so I thought I'd share how I've done it. I'll quickly show you the effect I'm on about. Uh, assuming this is going to load. Yep. So it's this rain effect here um, in the game. So I'll go through how the basic effect works and then how you can enhance it using the ACM mode to do these kind of different coloured blocks in the background. Uh, and if we've got time, I'll go over how to, how to do the splashes as well. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, or maybe the lightning as well. Um, so, yeah, let's let's dig straight in. So we're going to do it completely from scratch. So I'm going to close that down. Uh, minimize this one. We'll, we'll start in a completely brand new file in here. So um, let's make a file called main. will be our boot file. So I tried a couple of different ways to do this. Um, and I ended up going going back and taking a look at uh, Creatures 2, the snow effect. Oh, the music is loud. Uh, okay, it's sort of loud. How's that? Still not figured out the levels in this thing. Is that better? Okay, cool. Yeah, so I went back and had a look at um, at Creatures Two to figure out how they'd done it because the problem I had was the the rain that I did was a diagonal rain originally, and and you could see the patterns in it. So I'll, I'll quickly demonstrate what I mean by that. Um, so if you imagine, let's just enable a tile system in here. So I had tiles three by three. Um, and then in, in the tile I had some rain going on. So I wonder if I can just draw straight into the tile. Uh, tile editor, where's that? Tile editor. Where are you, tile editor? Just lurking around here somewhere there is. So, yes, proceed. So I just had diagonal lines like this. Uh, and they would loop around the tile like so. So you could, you would animate one tile and then it would display uh, on the screen. Um, let's try and move this back up to the top. But the problem with that is the pattern is very obvious. Um, so I tried to figure out how, how to do it. I, I tried a few different approaches. Um, I tried to make a set of four tiles which could be interchanged, but that become really difficult to animate it. Um, so I looked into how Creatures did it. You start a new project. And the way Creatures does it is really simple. So let me just put some numbers in here. Um, doesn't really matter if these are neat or not but I'll do it with I'll do it with six to begin with uh, but when we do the actual routine we'll, we'll do it with a few more and it's thanks to the debugger that it was really easy to, to work out how they'd done this 
um, and I realised that the effect can be used effectively uh, to do other effects as well, which is how I did the, the rain effect. So originally it was the snow effect I was trying to fix. Um, and then I realised that the, the solution would also work for the rain. So the way they do it is they have a tile which is one wide and six down, and that repeats all the way down. Like so, in fact I'm just going to copy it like this. Like that. Now if I was just to keep doing that across the screen, I'd get a pattern again, and, and that's no good. So the way you do it is you alternate where they start. You pick some random positions, uh, like so, and you do this all the way across the screen. Um, I mean, I'm not going to show it entirely, I'm not going to fill the entire screen up, but you can see now the pattern is a lot harder to see. It's a lot harder to find a visible pattern in there. So, can you make some line text a bit bigger? Yes, it's always in the bottom right, or it's always in the bottom right. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there. Um, oh right, you meant the window in here, I see. Yeah, I don't know why it was all the way down there. So you can see that pattern is a lot, it's a lot harder to spot a pattern in there, but there is a repeating pattern, it's going down, but it's a lot harder to spot. Now the limitation of this, it means we can't animate anything horizontally, so I can't move anything from here into this row, because if I do that there, it's going to go from here to here, there. It's, it's not going to work like that, but we can animate things up and down these strips very easily. Um, so we can animate a dot from here, we can animate all the way down to six and wrap it around to one and it will look like it's going down this whole strip. And at the same time, the same dot will be here, 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 and moving down the strip. Yeah, it's a pain on a big monitor to find that window. It is when you've got it at the window shrunk as well. So that's what I started doing. I started trying to make this work. Um, in this in this way instead of the other way so that's what we're going to do I'm, i am going to write um the numbers up to nine and then i'll s export this character set and i'll sh i'll show you how we f first of all we'll set the screen up uh, and then we'll do i'll show you how to do the animations so we'll keep those numbers like that and i'll just export this character set uh, we only need 10 characters no point in exporting the whole thing And once you've once you've got this set up, it's actually really easy to come up with other things to do. So you can do. I did the rain. I've done these this snow with it. Um, you can very easily do a star field. In fact, the very first thing we'll do is a star field because um, it's going to be the easiest thing. Um, but it's going to be the the starting point for pretty much anything you want to do, really. Um, and it's surprisingly simple to set up as well. So let's let's set that at two thousand. Uh, should be in here. Yep. Yeah. So the reason I'm doing it at two thousand, not one thousand. If you put a character set at one thousand, the Vic won't see it. It'll only ever see the character on. So you won't get you won't get the right effect. Okay. So let's start by let's let's set the color of the background first. Let's just do black. We can we can work out what looks better shortly after this. And I'm going to indent that a little bit as well. Um, and now we need to set the the character set and the screen. We'll keep the screen at 0400. There's no point changing it just for this demo. Um, we just need to move the, the character set up to 2000. So the character set at 2000 is 100. So uh, let's have a look. So we're keeping the, the screen memory at 0400, so that's that bit. And then we want the character set here, like so. 
back to some D018. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and then we'll have just an endless loop down here. Uh, in fact, I'll put a label on it. I'll call it main loop. Um, so this isn't going to do very much. It's just going to it's just going to switch the character set out and set the background to black. I think it looks looks all wrong. So let's make a couple of routines. So let's uh, fill screen. <laughs> Hi guys. Oh, I like them emotes. Sex, sex. I can't even say that. Zorwax. I like those. Thanks for the raid, Hayes. Welcome, guys. So, if you've not been here before, I'm Chalan 50K. I do some um, C64 dev. Um, tonight, we're looking at how to make uh, a rain or snow effect. Um, get wrecked, paper boy. What did you? What was the last thing you played? I left just before you you stopped playing um, Kings Valley. I didn't see the last thing you played. Did you go back to paper boy? Yeah, I saw the Kings Valley one. Hi, stack bats. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, so I've just I've just explained um, about tiling um, tiling characters on the screen in a way that you can't see a pattern um, by using vertical strips and just offsetting the the Y positions here. Um, we're just going to implement a routine that does that uh, now. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is uh, first of all I'm going to create um, a byte, a list of bytes. Oops. I'll demonstrate um, just by first of all filling it with zero. So I'll demonstrate what happens if it if it looks terrible, uh, and then we'll go through what happens if you uh, if you stagger things out. So I need to put this fan on. It's really warm in here. I'm also drinking tonight, Hayes. It's them twiglets. I started eating twiglets and then realised I didn't want twiglets at all. They made me need booze. Oh, pardon me. So these are our, our Y offsets. I'm going to call it Y offsets, actually. Um, and you'll see how we use that in a minute. So we're going to go through each row. We're going to do uh, 24 rows. Um, Yeah, to a, to a 25 rows, so we start at 24, we go down to zero. And I'm going to loop back to here again. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to grab... Oh, we're also going to go through 40 characters, so... Uh, let's just do it with... like that. So we're going to go through 40 characters in a row, 25 rows down. Um, we're going to grab the Y offset related to our current column here. Actually, this needs to start at 1 because our character set starts at, at 1. The 0 is a blank. And we're going to store that at a screen offset, which is going to be 0400. Uh, well, yeah, 0400, comma Y, like that. We'll make this self mod, so let's put a S mod label there for self mod. Um, the reason I'm setting it to 0400 is because it's just going to start at 0400. We're only going to fill it once, so you beat Paperboy. I don't believe you at all. <laughs> I don't believe you at all. <laughs> You want to see the rain effect? All right, I'll show you the rain effect again while I catch up on chat a little bit. Um, you 
Yeah, Zork does Zork does uh, Nest streams as well. So that's a good one if you want to learn some 6502 as well. We started playing Fall Guy, but we fell over an acute raid. So <laughs> he's ready to raid. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we're going to try and recreate. It's actually a very, very simple effect. It's it's deceivingly um, it's deceivingly simple. So this is what we're going to go for. Uh, we're going to start by just making the basic rain, and then depending on how much time we've got, we'll add splashes and lightning and, and other things. Hi, twins, and welcome to the stream. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so we're we're going to actually this does need to go backwards. So let's start from right like that. There we go. So we're going to load this. Oh, that needs to have forty in it. We're going to load the Y offset from here, and we're going to store it at our screen location. Then we're going to decrease the Y. Um, and while the Y is still positive, we'll go back to loop. Then we'll decrease the X. So this one here. Actually, we'll do this forward. So we'll go from the top down to the bottom because um, we need them to go in order. So, so we'll increase the X. And if the X is 25, we'll branch to the end which will be here. And da, da, da. and then we need to increase these values here. So we need to load that, add 42. I'll do it in without hexadecimal so it's obvious. So this is just increasing. So this is just a simple screen fill. This is the sort of thing you do to clear the screen. Um, but just with a little bit more kind of precision. Um, jump back to loop. Oh, and this should not be, this should be an inner loop here. There we go probably jump to S mod but I'm gonna explicitly call it like that um, okay and let's run that so this is just gonna fill the screen with with the number one or it should do anyway if I've done it correct yeah so we filled the screen with the number one so what we want to do is we want to make sure that each row each column sorry increments as it goes down so the way we do that is this value here when we've stored it here we're then going to add one to it and store it back in the offset again. However, if that value is more than, right, I'm going to stop using hexadecimal for these values because it's just a little bit easier to read for this, for the purposes of this. So if it's um, set new value, if it's more than or equal uh, sorry, if it's less than or equal to uh, 9, then we jump to set new value. Otherwise, um, we can subtract 9 from it again. And that will just reset it. So now when I run this, our values should... Uh, our values should go from 1 to 9 down the screen. Um, they do, but they're going across the screen for some reason. We'll figure out why it's doing that. Uh, load wire 39, yes. Let's do in a leap. Oh, because I need to copy this here. There we go. That's better, right. So you can see our values are, are going down the screen. We seem to be missing number nine for some reason. I thought I'd saved that, but apparently not. Uh, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, because it starts at zero. Uh, let's, let's start at zero, whatever. 
And let's just change this. Let's delete that character there. There we go. Um, nine is just what I used in the rain. I'm actually, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to say it so you can configure the length of it. I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that. This, this initial stage of filling the screen is something you will do right at the beginning. You will do this once and you will probably never touch it again. Um, it may be that you even incorporate this into a tile map as well. So you may have tiles that have these patterns in them, um, really the the amount that in fact let's put the amount in there now so let's create um uh, let's create a label let's call it strip length and let's make it 12 and then we can show how to change that so basically wherever there's a nine i'll we'll put strip length in like so problem is we're not going to see anything above nine at the moment but that's just what i've put in so this is 10, 11, 12, and, and so on. Um, but yeah, I mean, if we did eight, yeah, we could do it by by masking out that top bit. But the idea is is to make it variable so you can change the size of it. So, so that's what this is doing. But obviously you can still see the pattern there, right? It's very obvious that this is just a repeating pattern down the screen. Um, the horizontal kind of alignment of it makes it very obvious that there's a pattern there. So what we can do is in this thing here, we can use um, Kick Assembler to generate some random values. And the way I like to do this is take um, the value that we're at currently. So this will go from 0 to 40. Um, use Modular to wrap it to whatever your value is here. So now I will have a value from 0 to 7 in this case. And then add uh, a random. In fact, we can do this uh, in here. Add a random value, and then modular it. So here, I'm going to add a random value up to the strip length plus one. I always want it to be at least one. I never want it to be zero. I want it to be at least one. Um, so now this will generate. An array of 40, a list of 40 values which are staggered and uh, shouldn't repeat. And you see that's a lot harder to detect. There is a bit of repetition here, um, but you can play around with this, this routine. Um, you might want to do something like this to, to try and stagger the, the randomness a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, you get the idea. Um, <clears throat> let's try and make it more random. I don't want any row to repeat itself. That's what I'm trying to avoid here. So if I do, uh, let's do it by a quarter plus one. Yeah, that should be value I'm at plus a random number plus one. Let's try that. Uh, I mean, it's still it's still repeating. Let me. Why is it still repeating? It really shouldn't be doing. Take the value I'm at. Maybe I need to wrap these in brackets. Maybe that's the problem here. Sometimes kick assembler can be funny like this. It's similar to how we animate slot reel animations. It kind of is a little bit, yeah. It kind of is a little bit. The, the trick is to try and stop horizontal matches. So we've still got a few horizontal matches here. So I'm going to try and get rid of these somehow. Um, I don't know why we've still got horizontal matches. This should be adding number from 0 to 7 times that would be 0 to 3 plus 1. It should not be repeating itself. Uh, I've got to do 
it seems to be for some reason. I mean, the other way you can do it as well is you can just create the numbers yourself. So if I was to, instead of doing it this way, let's let's just type some numbers in. Um, you may want to make sure that your um, your strips are um, exactly how you want them. You may want to handcraft them. So let's just make a, a pattern. It doesn't matter if I repeat over the other half of the screen. So let's just do kind of one quarter of the screen and then. Um, and then repeat it. So zero, one, two, three. I mean, the problem with this is if I change the length of this, it's not going to change any of the lengths here at all. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We don't need eight because, oops. So that's eight bytes. That's that's forty bytes, right? So that now should look a lot less repetitive. There we go. So let's go with that. Okay. So now this looks a lot less uh, like a repeating pattern. Let's catch up with chat a little bit. Um, okay. People just calling each other airwolves and paper boys. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so that's the basics of setting the screen up. So the next thing to do is to animate this. So the other advantage of having them in strips going down the screen is that when you look at the character set, the bytes that make these up, that go down like this, are in rows of eight. So actually each row is the next byte along. So if we've got eight, a strip length of eight, that means we've got 64 bytes, one for each row. So what that allows you to do is reference the Y position very, very easily. So let's make a couple of macros. We'll, we're going to call this one clear, uh, clear strip. Um, and this is going to basically fill all the, all the data, the first however many bytes of this according to the strip length here. Let's put the strip length at the top actually, so it's obvious. Um, with zero to clear it. So if we just put a for loop in again, I'm gonna unroll this because it's just, it's just a, it's a good idea to do this as fast as possible, even though it is fairly cheap and it's, it's a very efficient routine. Um, the more you unroll in this, then the more you'll be able to do with the effect itself, the more rata time you'll have left over for the effect. Can you randomize the rain in the background instead of following a standard progression like an overflow into the next line and repeat? Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what it's doing. Um, so I'll, I'll explain as we go along. So the, the, the effect basically has um, individual layers of rain which animate at their own speed individually of the other layers. Um, but I'll show you how to do that. First, I'm just gonna show you how to set this uh, these macros up to do this. So we need however long the strip is times by eight. And all we need to do is start by loading the accumulator with zero and store that at our char set location plus I. And that's it, that's our that's our clear strip. So if I if I call that macro here, we should get a blank screen. Why is that not running? Hi Mads, welcome to the stream. So yeah, there we go, blank screen. It's because I've cleared that strip. So the next step is to create a macro for plotting a pixel. And, oops. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to take the values in the X register and the Y register to plot the pixel. So, um, in order to do this, we need a table. We need uh, powers of two. So if you've got 
I'm sure anybody who's done this on graph paper back in the day will know that if you've got a character like this, uh, each one of these rows represents, a, uh, each one of these columns represents a binary digit. So this is one one zero zero one zero one zero. If a pixel is on, it's a one. If it's off, it's a zero. So what that means is, if you want to plot a pixel, you basically need to turn on one of these one of these binary digits um, and so it's useful to have this this table which is the powers of two um, starting from the left side of the number like that so in order to plot a pixel if the x uh, x register and y register all we need to do is we need to load the value at 2000 comma y because our y register tells us how far down we are on the strip and the strip is contiguous memory is it like the powers of love yeah <laughs> um, and then the x register points to somewhere in this table so pixel 0 here to pixel 7 here uh, which is these numbers here so all we have to do is turn that pixel on so we just or it with the value so if you if you've got a value and you or it with another value it just basically merges the two together um, so we're going to mer merge it with powers of 2 comma x and then we're going to store that value back in here again and it's that simple that's a pixel being plotted so if we clear the strip um, and we load the value from 0 to 7 so we'll load 3 and a y from 0 to however long our strip is 64 so we'll do 32 uh, and then do uh, plot pixel so now we'll get a single dot there there you go so you can see a bit of a pattern going on here I mean this is mainly because I've repeated um, I've repeated this here uh, for the Y offsets actually let me go and grab because I did this routine already for here so let me just try and find it in here because uh, I can just steal the, the random that I did in here uh, which where the hell did I do it there This is what messy code looks like when I don't have to show anybody or and here I am showing everybody oh no it wasn't on that one was it it's in it's in map it's in here that's it uh, uh, my landscape somewhere in here I have Oh, okay. I see how I did it. All right, let's copy that. Let's do it like this. So instead of using a fill, what I've done here, um, I've used a temporary value, which is our starting point. And then I, I do a loop. And on each loop, I reevaluate what this number is by adding um, adding a random number to it. So a random number up to up to three quarters of our strip length, um, and then pushing that into into the array just by writing a single byte. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, the rain's all completely dynamically drawn, yeah. Um, so the, ran, the, the rain is randomized, so um, when, I, when the game, when it's compiled, it generates, depending on how many you've asked it to do, it generates up to 16 or so raindrops that are at different X's and Y's and of different lengths and different speeds, um, that's completely randomized. 
So every time I start, every time I build the game, I get different rain. Um, I am gonna, I am gonna lock it down to whichever one I think looks the best. But they, um, they are, they are completely randomised. They do look quite similar though. So okay, so hopefully now this should still, this should look a little bit more random. Uh, which it does. So it's a lot harder to see a pattern in here now. There still are patterns. Um, the, di the vertical distance between these dots is always the same, um, but it's quite hard to see. So this is what we're aiming for. We're aiming for it to look like this. Um, so the other thing we need to do is we need a clear pixel function. And the clear pixel function is basically the same as, uh, as the plot pixel function, but instead of using the powers of two, we use the inverse powers of two. Um, so in this case, whatever number you add to this number here to get FF. So uh, like so. Uh, I missed who that was. Retro Man Cave, welcome to the stream. You knew I was going to ask those questions, Charlotte, yeah. I, I spent quite a long time playing around with this effect, so I've kind of, all the questions you're asking I've probably gone through at some point um, and tried to, tried to fix it. So we use the inverse powers of two, and the, the difference here is we're not trying to merge something, we're trying to remove something, so this time we and the value. And what this is doing is saying, keep every pixel except for this one because it's the inverse of it. So we're saying keep all the pixels except the one that we want to clear. So we use an and there instead. So now if I do, uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not using them. So if I just do a clear pixel straight away, we go back to a, a clear screen again. There you go, completely clear screen. So, how can we use this to make stars? So this is where the fun bit is. So with these three functions, we have enough now to do pretty much any effect we want to that works in a vertical strip. So we can do rain effects, we can do snow effects, um, we can do star fields, uh, we could do, oh, it could do all sorts, of, all sorts of things. So um, I've got some ideas for what I'm gonna do for my third effect. Um, which I'm not going to share until I've done it actually. That's going to be one level I keep kind of try. Well, I'll try and keep it on the wrap. So I've, I'm quite excited about this this new game. So I'm sure I'll end up bleating out on Twitter at some point. Uh, got a really itchy nose today. I don't know why. Okay, so we'll make um, we'll make some stars now. So we'll keep these macros here. Um, in fact, let's just move them down to the bottom of the file. It doesn't really matter where they are, so they don't take up any memory. They just get used when they get used. So, how is the raster time? Well, you'll see in a minute. So, in fact, let's do that now. Let's let's um, let's do some raster stuff here. So, uh, we'll we'll wait until we're at um, FF. So we're just kind of just below the bottom of the screen. Oops. And this is where we're going to do any updates in here. Um, so what we'll do is um, uh, no, not that. Sorry. We'll increase the border color down here. We'll decrease it here. And this is where we're going to do stuff. So this is our do stuff loop. Thanks for the follow and the R cosign. Welcome to the stream. Line plots, dot plots, and whole shape. Yeah, I mean you can do pretty much anything. And the thing is, is with the splashes, what I'm doing is I'm as as well as drawing that strip, I'm then copying that strip. So copying those seventy-two bytes into another seventy-two bytes, and superimposing flashes on them as well, splashes on them, which I'll show you how to do as well. Um, and it's surprising how quick quick it all is as well. 
Um, okay, so we're going to do some stuff in this loop here, but before we do that, we're going to create some some stars. So um, we'll create some. Well, we'll create. A, we'll call it object count because we we're, we're going to do more than more than one effect type. So we'll just call it object. And then in here we're gonna we're gonna create some things. So object X. Uh, we're gonna use fractional values as well. So if you've watched my um, watched my game stream, you'll you'll know what I mean by fractional values. If you haven't, I'll explain in a minute. Uh, we'll initialize the fractional portion to zero, and we'll randomize this top part here. So what the, the, the fractional value does, um, this needs to be times 8, that's so why we want our x value to be from 0 to 7. So we're trying to set a position, an x position for our, our objects. Um, and that x position can be from 0 to 7 pixels. But obviously if we want to move things smoothly, we want to be able to move things at sub-pixel uh, speeds uh, and sub-pixel amounts. So we have this fractional value here. Um, we increase this value, and if it overflows, we increase this one, or we decrease decrease this. If it underflows, we decrease it, decrease this one. Uh, when it comes to actually drawing the pixels, we basically ignore this and just draw whatever this one says. Um, and we do the same with the the y as well. So, uh, and by using a fill, we can make sure we've got exactly the right amount of things that we need here. Um, and on this one here, time strip length. So now we've got a load of objects which will be positioned randomly um, in the X and Y anywhere on our strip. So was the char? Yeah, yeah. It was just to demonstrate how how you can kind of get rid of that pattern by by staggering the, the vertical strips. Could you put this rain effect over Paperboy? <laughs> so the the basic rain effect relies on the fact that you are clearing those characters um, and not actually overwriting existing characters. So it has to be on blank space. So you'll see in the in the game, um, I'm using ECM mode, which allows me to to change the background color as well as the foreground color, kind of like a spectrum um, mode. Um, And actually, there's nothing, there's no, there's no other detail behind the rain other than these colours. Um, you could enhance the function a little bit to draw over the background as well, but you'd have to have all your tiles separate. You couldn't have a tile here that's then reused here, else the rain would look different uh, and it wouldn't tile properly. So you have to, you, with a bit of design, you could do it definitely. Okay, let's uh, go back to here. Okay, so we've got these objects here now. So I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it um, draw objects. Um, put a capital on here. And so now what we want to do is we want to we want to go through this list of objects uh, and we want to draw them to the screen. Um, so the way I'm going to do this, first of all, I'm going to change this X here uh, to the accumulator because the reason being is I want to use the index to, to do various things. Um, actually, no, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it as X. Think, think, think. How to do this? Yeah, I'll keep it as X. It's fine. Okay. Okay, so we need to, uh, first of all, we need to uh, clear the bitmap. So clear the strip, like so. The last thing we'll do is exit. So we need to clear the strip. Then when we've cleared the strip, we need to start drawing the pixels. So we'll loop here. Um, 
actually we'll, we'll store this in a temporary location I'm going to put a temporary I should probably store this in zero page but as I've not banked the kernel out I'm just going to put it here for now it's so quick it really doesn't matter okay so um, we need to load our object X and our object Y so let's start by getting the Y X, there we go. We transfer that to the Y register. And then we can uh, load the object the X1 and transfer that to the X register and then plot pixel. Like so. Then we need to grab this value back again. Uh, increase x, store it back in temp, compare x with our number of sprites, well, really object count. There we go. And if it's not equal, we'll go back to the And then we need to call that from in here. So there we go. We've got all these stars being drawn. Anything you can kind of see a pattern, but you'll see how by moving them at different speeds, we kind of negate the the kind of view of that pattern. But it's still a lot more random than if you were to just create a three by three tile and move that around. And the rest of the time is quite small to do this. Um, you can actually get it more efficient than this so for instance you might want to um, take uh, the plot pixel it's so simple to, to do you might just want to take the plot pixel and do it manually in here um, so this is what we're actually doing uh, but what you could do is you could do I think you can do load wide camera. Let me just double check that. I can never remember these ones. Uh, load Y, come X, yeah. So you could load load it there like so. Load the value here. Uh, Yep, then all the power of two and that X needs to come from here. Just trying to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, blah blah blah, yep. I'm gonna load the wire here again. And then we need to get the Y back. So if I just push there, uh, sorry, no, it's probably not that more efficient actually. But I don't need to do this. See, and we can do this backwards as well. So this would be strip length minus one. Uh, should be a little bit more efficient, I think. Let's, if it even runs, let's have a look. Yep, same thing. It's actually not a huge difference in there. So let's keep the macros in place. That's just for for the ease of reading. I've made the macros, might as well use them. Uh, but you can see there's there's going to be ways to 
to optimize this, but it is really efficient, so there's not a huge need to do it. Okay. And that's that's how we draw all the objects in the in the list. Quite simple. Clear clear the uh, clear the bitmap. Plot all the plot all the new pixels. Uh, many years between the releases. What have I missed here? Oh god, I've missed loads. Uh, da, da, da. on YouTube in a new vid. Real pity the C2 didn't get a couple of layers like Mega Drive. Yes, it, it's, it is a real shame actually. Um, they tried to cut a lot of corners. They tried to make things super cheap. So, but yeah, layers would have been good. We would have got um, we would have got high resolution multicolor then as well. You would have been able to sacrifice layers for uh, for higher resolution multicolor. But yeah, what do I know? Right, so we're going to create an update objects, and the function, uh, the, the the point of this function, is to move these these points along. So we do that before or after. It really doesn't matter where we do it. Um, and basically, this this does kind of the same thing as the draw, but instead of drawing, it's just updating the values. Um, probably do these loops backwards but uh, as I say it's so quick I'll leave I'll leave that as an exercise for you guys if you want to if you want to edit this this will be on uh, github shortly after the stream finishes as well right in fact I'm gonna go for a, a quick break uh, I need to get some wine uh, and when I come back we'll we'll make these things move and then I'll show you how to to make them move at different speeds and then we'll, we'll move on to more complex stuff like rain and snow so I'll be right back in two minutes, guys. I'm back with wine. Hi, New, Lapit New Lapitas. Welcome to the stream. Not a lot of wine. This is a good thing because I have got work in the morning, so I can't get too drunk. <coughs> right, okay. So we need to up update the object loop. So a simple way to do it would be to just add a static speed to them all. So let's start by doing that. So we're not going to change the x, we're just going to change the y direction. So all we do, we load the value from there. We add a set amount to it, and this is subpixel, so we can, you know, go from one really slow. Uh, we'll do half a pixel. Uh, and store the result in here. Uh, we'll clear the carry bit before we go into here. And then because we're doing fractional, we need to add zero. Uh, to the top half like that. The carry bit will always be clear once we've got to here because if it overflows here, it will get consumed here. Um, and that should be enough to move things down the screen. But you'll see what happens, they'll get to a certain point and then they'll just disappear. Now the reason they're disappearing is because this value here now, if this exceeds, uh, if this exceeds the strip length times eight, then we've gone off the bottom. Uh, so no uh, wrap here. So if it's less than that value, then we don't need to wrap. If it's more than that value, um, then we need to subtract this from it. And then store it. And we do need to clear the carry bit every frame now because this could end up leaving the carry bit set. So, why oh, is that not working? What have I done? I forgot to put the plus in there. There we go. Hi, Carl. Welcome to the stream. 
and there we go we've got a load of dots moving down the screen so that doesn't look too great because they're they're moving at the same speed all the time um, and we don't want that we want them to move at different speeds so this is where we can add some more fun in here um, we go up to our objects and now we set object y speed and we do the same again and fill this array with some random numbers and this time we're gonna we're gonna add uh, a minimum speed of say 40 and we'll pick a speeds between 40 and 40 plus 80 like that and now when we update instead of adding that here we will now add our y speed and now we should have dots all moving at different speeds. Uh, what have I done wrong? Oh. There we go, nice and simple. And that's kind of the basis of a star field effect, so very, very simple star field effect. Thanks for the follow, casual chat. Welcome to the stream. And thank you, Mr. G. Yep, spotted that. Thanks. Um, we can enhance the speed as well. We can um, we can do it in two portions. Um, you know, so we can we can decide a value from uh, forty to eighty, and then maybe. Like that, and we've got we've got even more speed now that we can play around with. Um, I'm going to revert this in a second, but I just want to show you that you can kind of play around with the speeds quite quite a lot. Um, uh, I'm just going to use a single speed. Actually, no, I'll keep I'll keep both speeds in because it's handy for the rain. So there you go. Now we've got we've got dots moving at various speeds, and you can change the object count. So something quite low for a sparse uh, field and less raster time. Or you can change it to something quite high to use more raster time but a more dense star field as well. So you've got something a lot more dense there. Um, there is a little bit of a flicker going on. I don't know if it's because it's missing a frame somewhere. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this, uh, and I'm going to change it to, I mean, normally I'd do this in a raster interrupt, but I'm not going to set a raster interrupt up for this. Uh, and uh, the way I'm going to do it is, if it's less... Go back. There we go. Should feel it less now. I think it's just missing. Okay. Thank you for the follow, Benji Base. Oh, it's going crazy now. Why is it going crazy? Uh, if it's oh, it's the other way around. Yeah, there we go. It's a bit more stable now. So yeah, you can see it's it's pretty easy to make the effect. It doesn't use much rest of time this is for 16 separate uh, stars that are being animated here um, so you can think of that as 16 layers and you can work with this to create lots of different effects so I'm going to show you now how how to do the rain effect um, so we use pretty much exactly the same stuff we've got here uh, I am gonna up the minimum speed a little bit um, Do it like that, yeah. And I'm going to reduce the count down to about eight. I can't remember how many actually I use for. I think it is eight I use for the rain. Yeah, there we go. So to make the rain, uh, the only additional property we need to add in here is a length. And again, these are just random values. So 
I pick a minimum length of say four and I add a random length so it can be anywhere between four and uh, eleven in length. Now the difference here is when I draw I don't clear the strip. I still move things at the same speed but I don't clear the strip. I do one clear and I do that right at the beginning here which I'm doing. I'll get rid of this plot because I don't need that anymore. Instead what I do is I start by um, so this is my this is my pixel plot I'm gonna clear a pixel as well so the pixel I'm gonna clear is the one that's that's listed but the pixel I'm gonna plot is gonna be a number down the screen so the number down the screen is going to be the length this bit here um, I think I'm already I don't think I changed the X and Y here no I don't so I don't need to grab these values again they're already in X and Y and it's only the Y I'm interested in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the Y to the accumulator and I'm going to add our object length I do need to get the X back from here though Actually, I, I am going to need these again, aren't I? Let's, uh, let's create the Y and then I'll grab the X again. So this is the last thing I'm going to do is grab the X. Um, but first I'm going to get the length, add it to our Y position. And then I'm going to compare that to our uh, strip length times 8. If it's less than that, there isn't a wrap. Same same routine again, we're just making sure that if the value goes off the bottom it gets wrapped around to the top again. Uh, if it doesn't need to wrap around then we're just going to subtract that value. Um, and then whatever's in the accumulator is going to get put into the Y. We're going to load our, our X position again and then we're going to plot that pixel and this one should be clear pixel. So now what we're doing is for any given line, for any given pixel, say we say it's here and our length is four, we're going to clear that, we're going to count four down and draw a pixel. Then on the next frame, so let's do it over here, say we're starting at the top, right, and we're, it's four long, we'll count down, draw a pixel. Then on the next frame, it's moved down, so now we're clearing this pixel, this pixel is already there, and we're drawing this one here. And then on the next frame it will look like that and then on the next frame it will look like that and by the time it gets down to here the next one will clear this pixel and it will look like that and then it will look like this and so on and it will just keep repeating so now if we run that oh, we're getting some clearing issues but you can see the lines appearing uh, so let's have a look we clear the pixel at this position. Oh, it's because what we need to do now is instead of updating the object here in a loop, uh, we need to update the object individually. So I'm going to move this code out, uh, which is this bit here. Uh, and this is going to go here. Actually, let's, let's just call this update pixel. Uh, update object actually uh, so we don't need that value from there and we just need to get rid of the loop out of here uh, like so there we go so now this is doing the same thing, it's updating the thing, but it's doing it just for the one. It's still broken, why is it broken? Let me think about this. Clear the current pixel. 
update the object. I'm gonna I'm gonna load that value again just in case. Clear the pixel. Draw a pixel at the end of the strip. I've done wrong here. Let me just go and check my original code. So in my rain effects, I am doing clear, update, draw. Yeah, I'm doing it correct. Clear. Update and draw. Okay, that should be fine. I'm doing it the right way. I've missed something somewhere. What if I missed? Yep. Update object comes down here, moves everything along, which was correct. Four pixel. Am I missing a carry bit or something somewhere? Yeah, you could make it change color as it moves boundaries as well. So one of the things um, I considered as an effect was having it move up the screen and having colors uh, ranging in a gradient going from um, like white to black. So it would look like stuff kind of evaporating off the floor. Um, okay, should be fine. I don't know what I've done wrong here. Object length, yes. to white. I feel like the clear is clearing the wrong thing. Uh, okay, think, 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 right. Um, well, let me just comment this out. I just want to make sure that it's actually clearing things correctly. This is really straightforward. I'm, I'm a bit annoyed that it's not coming together quite as easy. Oh, I know why. I know why. I know why. So, the problem we've got here is if you move things more than one pixel, then it's going to it's going to skip some pixels when it's clearing. So you have to move sub one pixel, like so. Yeah, so what I did um, to make this work was I did I ran this routine a few times. Uh, so draw objects is here. Uh, plot pixel. Yeah, I just did this a couple of times. I did it like that to make it run a bit faster. So what you'll notice is because of the way it's drawing, if a raindrop moves over another raindrop, it will it will clear what's behind it. So one thing you can do to prevent that and prevent that weird effect is here instead of doing random, it doesn't really matter um, how random the X is because they're all going to move at different speeds vertically. Um, so you can just kind of do that and then you the raindrops won't overlap with each other and there you go so now if you change the color of that to something um, a bit more kind of easy on the eye so I used the gray color so it's uh, let's go with a uh, dark gray and just create a quick loop here just to fill up the Uh, 
and there you go you've got rain in in lots of different layers uh, moving down the screen and you can change the, the values so if I reduce the uh, the object count a little bit um, I have to sp spread it out a little bit like that then uh, increase the length of the strip uh, increase the length of the raindrops a little bit like so you can get lots of different effects so it's not quite right let's have a look what settings I set in my other one so I had uh, in my game I managed to go for uh, where's my rain uh, my X was oh that's old that's that shouldn't even be being used anymore uh, my X was completely randomized I didn't even go for the um, go for the staggered approach so we'll do that in a minute I only used five drops um, and a length of between two and ten so let's try, let's try those values so I just did I tweaked these values a lot while I was messing with them um, and this was two times eight and my object count was five is that not running there we go there we go and that's pretty much how it works um, the added effect that I have is I have the background flashing for lightning so I just have a random um, timer but it's not even a timer it's just a random number so every frame it picks a random number if that random number is a certain value then it begins a lightning animation um, and I have splashes on the ground so I'm going to show you how to do the splashes now um, actually what time are we on yeah I'll show you how to do the splashes it's pretty easy to do um, and then I'll, sh I'll show you how we can turn this into a snow effect as well uh, quite easily it's, it's not that much effort actually so let's start by um, let's call this draw rain objects because we're gonna we're gonna have a mess around with this a little bit you can probably optimize this as well to to clear multiple um, pixels at the top um, before it before it updates so that's, oops that's the update there uh, but you can see it doesn't use very many um, very much in the in the way of uh, uh, very much in the way of raster time so it's it's kind of all right so what I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna add a bit more of a character setting let's go up to 64 uh, and what we'll do is we'll add some little temporary kind of shapes in here um, just to demonstrate some kind of ground of some kind um, in fact why am I even doing that let's just fill it in let's fill it in in one color should be fine right uh, let's export that character set and so up here where we set the color I'm gonna this this is our kind of temporary setup area so I'm gonna put a little comment here So what I'm going to do is across the middle of the screen somewhere um, I'm going to put the, the new character in which is this one uh, I'm going to put I'll just put 8 in I think is enough so um, yeah. and we'll store that at, uh, let's see let's put it uh, try to work the numbers out in my head Eight zero five zero five one eight five four eight. Let's let's do it here, uh, and let's do it uh, eight. So sixteen across the screen. So let's do it there. Okay, and we'll change the color of it as well. I think so. 
There we go. So we're going to make the, the rain splash on, on these areas here. So in order to do that, we need a little splash animation. So I'm just going to draw something really quickly uh, in here. Oops. should be enough just to demonstrate I mean you, you can change this to whatever you want the trick here is to try and keep this as low as possible and you'll see why in a minute um, it minimizes how much you actually need to actually need to draw uh, so let's explore that character set You kept it high edge, you could have different color, yeah. Or you could use multicolor and you could let one of the three colors be its entire life. One of three colors, yeah. The problem with multicolor is because of the double wide pixels, it would look a bit chunky. Um, but you could still do it. You would uh, obviously you would have to change your um, your routines here um, to combine these two. So you'd have a, like a multicolor power of two and a multicolor inverse power of two. You should have like C zero three zero. 0C zero and zero 03 uh, and then your X would go from 0 to 3 instead of 0 to 7 but you could still do it um, it just looks a lot better in, in high res and, and the game that I've been working on is in ECM mode so um, I have the benefit of being able to change the background colour as well uh, did I actually export that? I think I did but I'm going to export it again just in case nope not that one Export character set. There we go. So, in order to make the splash work, what we need to do is we need to have another another set of raindrops. So, the way I do this is, I have a copy of of the raindrops in the in the row below, down here. And the way I do that is, I have two routines in my um, in my in my thing here uh, I've got the fill screen so I'm gonna create uh, oh God, it's kind of a bit of a mess already this far I'm gonna do it here so this is gonna be a copy effect and this is gonna be another unrolled loop and this is basically just gonna take um, take all the bits that we've we've drawn uh, strip length oops Can take all the bits that we've drawn in this location and it's going to store them in the next row down which is at uh, 2080 plus i now that in itself isn't going to do very much um, so we, we need to put the splashes over the top of these uh, and I'll show you how we do that in a minute. What I am going to do just to demonstrate how this is working, um, I am going to uh, I'm just going to put some uh, horizontal lines in them so you can see uh, where where the ones that we're drawing are. Um, so this is a temporary little bit of code and it's it's literally just gonna draw horizontal lines in, in these things. And we need to do this every frame. So in our main loop up here, once we've drawn all the rain, we then need to copy it into the row below. Now we won't see anything when we do this because we haven't done anything with it. So what we need to do here is on the row above this platform we need to we need to draw these new pieces now if we just was to um, let's put this in here if we were to just draw any old thing in here 
time. We get, oh, actually it's drawn in the completely wrong place. Why is that drawn in the wrong place? Oh, because. That should be 2080. I've drawn it in the copy chart set. Yeah, kick ass loops got them wrong. So you can see we've drawn new raindrops, uh, new, the copied effect above, but it's all the same raindrop, the pattern's repeating all the way across. So what you have to do is take, because we're basically just moving this, copying this row down to the next row. If we do in our copy function, wherever it is, uh, not that one, sorry, in our setup up here, we will load the value that's currently in that location because we've filled the screen here with, with raindrops. So we'll load the value that's in that current location and we'll just add the one zero bit to it so it's actually the next row of characters. Like so. So now you can see the rain is actually falling through that. So we've got a different set of characters because we've got the line through, which you can see. But now the rain is actually correct. It's actually falling down through. So that means we can start, instead of just drawing a line here, we can draw splash effects or whatever we want to draw. So let's go and do that. So instead of this, we're going to do a splash effect. And the way I, I did this was I had a an array called splash frames and I fill this with whatever our object count is and I fill this with some values uh, from zero up to um, whatever the kind of I call it this uh, frequency the high this is kind of the inverse splash frequency so the higher this number is the slower the raindrops will repeat uh, like so, there we go. Um, and then in here, what I do is I take um, x started at zero and it indent that. I don't like the way this is. Oh, God's sake, Sublime sometimes does this. I don't know why. go backwards as well through these so now I'm cycling through the objects uh, sorry not the object count uh, strip length is what I need not object count is that right uh, yes and this should be strip length as well the splashes have got no relation to the um, to the actual drops themselves. They relate to the characters that exist in in the in the strip. So I cycle through the through the strip. I take the current splash frame and I decrease it, uh, which I will do. Uh, I will do it in the accumulator instead. So I load load it in. Uh, yep, and then the last thing I'll do is store it here. However, actually, I store it here. I'll now compare that to the number of frames we've got, which is, I think, it was four, wasn't it? One, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. Um, if it's more than four, no splash. However, if it's three, zero, one, two, or three, then we're going to add a splash to these. 
and to add a splash we basically we need to get the index of of the splash that we need to draw so it's 2080 plus the uh, the strip thing times 8 so if we're on if we're on the first strip character it will be 0 if we're on the second strip character it will be 8 from the third one it will be 16 and so on the way we do that transfer x to the accumulator shift it to the left three times and that's multiplied it by eight and now we can transfer that to the Y register and now what we need to do is uh, take the bit from here uh, and store it so we need the actual number from here as well uh, so we're actually going to take this number and times this by 8 as well before we do the X actually we'll store that in the Y and we'll store X in temp and we'll transfer the X to the accumulator and transfer it back and the last thing is we get the temp back again so now x is our let's write what these are so this is our uh, source and this is our target and we just need to do two copies because we're just copying two rows here we're just interested in these bottom two the highest one is two so we load the accumulator from our source which starts at this location here which is 2108 plus our rows down which is 6 comma y which is our source which will either pick this row from here this row from here this row from here and so on and store that at uh, 2080 plus 6 comma x actually what we need to do is load the original or that one and then store it back because we want to merge the two so okay see they are happening but they're happening very slowly uh, very quickly and then taking a long time to uh, so I don't know if you can see that they are happening so the way I got around this um, was by I increased this value here this comparison um, so actually if we multiply this by 8 then we don't need to do this bit here so now if the value is less than 20 then it will it will um, set that splash frequency as FF if the value is less than 20 um, then it will show but now we're gonna uh, hang on do I need to think about this sorry yes so at this point we do actually need to shift it to the right and then shift it back again. We just need to get rid of those uh, those files. Or what I can do is end it with F8, like so. Um, this just ensures that this value is still zero to four when it comes out of this 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 end, and no no values in the middle. That should slow the animation down a little bit. Uh, not seeing any animation though. Why is it not happening? Or is it happening and I'm not seeing it? Look at that again, right. So we're trying to get our source. Oh, because I'm doing that, there we go. Thank you, Mythical Duck. Still not happening for some reason. Uh, is it happening or am I just too blind to see it? 
Well, let's go. Let's reset it back to this. Just to make sure it's happening. And let's make sure that our splash frequency, whenever it goes uh, below zero, uh, So, uh, if it's plus, we'll go to here, otherwise, we will just do that here. So, this is just making sure that if we drop below zero, that our value gets reset to here. Um, so these splashes should happen a bit more frequently now. Yeah, so they are happening, they're just happening very quickly, that's the only problem. Um, which I should be able to sort out by doing that, that and trick as well, so... We could completely get rid of this and always have a splash, or at least one splash is always going to be active. And the splash frame is going to be... store the X in the temp here. Actually we can store the X in the temp here and then it's out of the way, it doesn't get in the way then. We'll just make sure we restore it at the bottom, which we do. So our value is now is from 0 to 2, 0. We need it to be from 0 to 4. Um, which we would normally do by doing this. But then we need to times it by eight to get the value for here. Let's just leave those in and see how that should be fine. And it should slow it down a bit, so there we go. But it's only showing one row. Why is it only showing one row? Ah, because I've only done one row, that's why. Um, so we've done one row and we copy the next row. There we go. And there we go, that's kind of how it's done. I mean, obviously the animation that I've used is a little bit better than that. But you can see all that, including the splash, only takes this many cycles. And you can change that by reducing the amount of raindrops, uh, reducing the strip size. So if I just reduce the strip size, which is currently 12, if I reduce that down to 9, you see now my raster time the, the effect looks almost the same. There's, there's very little difference between the two, um, but my raster time is a lot lower. So you can experiment with different strip sizes to, to create different things. So I'm still getting that flicker. This really should be an IRQ. It shouldn't be, um, they shouldn't be using this, this dumb, this dumb way of doing things. So I'm just gonna keep tweaking until it, <laughs> until it works for me. Um, but yeah, there you go. It's it's a very very simple effect to do. Um, you can tweak around with the random values to get the the thing the same uh, to get the uh, to get the rain to look the same every time uh, instead of using a, a random uh, on build time. So you'll see like some of the raindrops disappear because of the way that they overlap. So you see with two of these raindrops overlap, and when they do, one of them disappears. So this is a side effect of the way it's being drawn because we're not clearing the bitmap every frame. We're just clearing a, a pixel at the top and drawing one at the bottom again. Um, you can change this uh, splash to not happen quite as often as this. Um, you can do that by changing the splash frequency to a higher value, uh, say 40. Um, and then when you run it, only about half of the time the splashes will be will be there. So you can see they appear a lot less often. It looks a little bit more natural. Um, but you can see, because uh, I've got random on build, every time I run it, it's slightly different. And it's the same in my game, actually, but the, I think the values I've picked work better in the game. So um, we'll take what we've got here now um, and we'll change it to a snow effect. And the snow effect is, is pretty easy as well. 
if you wanted to add lightning to this, by the way, you would just flash the background color um, to white for a split second, or, or to white and then fade it out to another uh, back to black again. If you use ECM mode, you can actually paint half of the screen in uh, with a silhouette in 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 black. Um, keep the background color black, and then when you flash, you'll see the silhouette. So, like I showed on my on my game. Um, I think the background's grey actually in my game, but but it just adds a nice extra effect by having having two colours by using ECM mode. Yeah, so the background is is grey. It's a really really simple effect, and the the cool thing is as well is because because you've got these copied characters for the splashes, you can see uh, just above the player. Um, I know what characters right above my head, so all I have to do is add add uh, sixteen to the character above my head, and I get splashes on my head as well. Um, as long as I clear them when I move, it's a nice little little touch. It looks like it's splashing. It's a bit high um, because my character is only fifteen pixels high, not sixteen. Um, it, it adds a nice nice touch to it. I don't think it, it loses too much by it being high and it just makes it feel a bit more interactive. So let's have a look at the snow effect. So I'll show you the snow effect. This uses almost the same um, technique. It uses the same kind of way of doing strips and, and things. Uh, with a few extra tweaks in it. So we're going to recreate this, or partially this anyway. Um, I can figure out where my yeah all right so let's let's go and do that so we'll keep the code as it is I'm I'm not going to replace code because you might want to use this so um, I'm going to leave it as it is um, I'm just going to add new functions I'm going to co comment out certain functions as well um, so we're no longer going to be doing the rain so this is the rain effect Instead, we're going to do a snow effect. Uh, so we will we will clear the strip every frame, and what we will do is we will clear the strip, and then we will draw. Um, I don't know why that tabs like that. Weird. We will draw a new. Uh, pixels in so we will go to draw snow objects so we'll start with our draw objects function uh, that we've already got and, and we'll strip it down to, to what we actually need it to be for um, let's just move that down there like that bit. what we need it to be for snow so we don't need to clear a pixel because we've already cleared the whole strip. We also don't need to update the object. We'll do that in a separate separate function. We're literally just going to plot. So uh, we need to take. We don't need our length either. So we, we're not going to be using that. We're just going to be plotting a pixel. So that's it. That's that's basically a, a snow effect. <laughs> nah, kidding. So. We will change the color to white. We will change the background to uh, a blue color, a light blue. Um, and we will create a subroutine here called update snow objects. And update snow objects is just going to call this function. Uh, yeah, it's just going to. Well, no, it's not. We'll, we'll copy that function. I'll show you why. So we'll copy this. Uh, we'll get rid of the comments in this section as well. Don't need it for this one. Uh, but we do need the, the loop in here. Uh, like so. So this is should be a white star field at the moment. Yep, I'll get rid of this platform as well. Uh, I'll comment that out. 
Actually, no, I'll leave it in. It's it's not it's not really getting in the way. It's not causing any any problem. Um, yeah, I mean, you could argue that is kind of a snow effect, but obviously snow doesn't move like that. That's moving more like a star field. So what we need to do is we need to move the X uh, left and right a little bit. So the way I did this was um, um, I have. Let me remember how I did this now. Uh, right, okay, so as well as object length, I'm gonna create a new um, a new table here. Um, and this is gonna be, uh, well, I'll just call it sinus is, is fine. Um, and basically, this is gonna be a sine wave that goes through 32 positions. Um, and this is gonna be, uh, I don't remember whether I need an extra bracket here, but I always do it anyway. So the sine wave, um, we only need half of the sine wave, I think. No, we need the entire sine wave. Yeah, we need the entire sine wave. Um, so this is the entire sine wave. So this goes from minus one to one. Um, the range, it starts at zero, but it passes through one, passes through minus one, and ends up at zero. Um, and we need to times that by eight. So now it goes from zero to seven. Uh, sorry, it goes from minus seven to seven. So, okay, we need the number to go from uh, naught to seven. So we need to shift that sine wave so it goes from naught to seven. So in order to do that, we, we take a, a value from, uh, a sine wave of, of height 3.5 so now it's 3.5 down 3.5 up and then add 3.5 so now it's 0 to 7 at the top hey tin spin oh you got your transparent case cool oh I need some more wine Oh, and that's it. That's it for my wine. So, I need to take my time with this. I have no more alcohol again. Okay. Um, I'm also gonna I'm gonna change this here. Um, actually, no, I'm not. I am going to. Let me think about this. I'm going to call it Snow X. And Snow X is basically going to be whereabouts in this array um, the current snow particle is. And it's going to be Snow X1 because it's also going to be fractional. We'll keep using Object X0 as our lower, but we'll use this as, a, as an upper, a different upper. And this needs to be times 32 because that's the length we've got here. So when we draw our snow um, and we update our snow, we need to be using snow x1 instead of object x1. Now to draw our snow, instead of grabbing the value in object x1, we're going to grab the value in snow x1. We're going to transfer that to the, uh, to the x register. And then we're going to load the value in sinus, comma x. So we're now grabbing the value in here that corresponds to whatever this value is in, and plot that. So again, this isn't going to do very much. We're going to have the same effect, uh, but now it's using that sinus graph to pick an x value. So what we need to do is we need to increase this um, this value by our x speed. So if we snow x speed um, x zero speed uh, actually I just call it x speed because we're not going to use fractional it's, it's all fractional this one uh, and this will be object count and then again it will be a random number it needs to be fairly low you don't want it to move too fast so you want it to be kind of half a pixel per frame 
at most a quarter, between a quarter and a half a pixel of frame. Or I mean, you can do it even slow; it really doesn't matter. Um, and then all we do in our snow objects when we update, uh, which is here, yep, we load our object x zero. We add snow speed. Store it. We need to clear the car bit here. And then we load, uh, actually, it's called snow x1, add zero. So, what we're doing is we're moving through that sine wave at varying speeds depending on what speed we've set for the, for the flake. Um, we need to check that we've not overflowed. Uh, our, our array is 32 long. If it's less than that, we can we don't have to wrap. Uh, otherwise, we need to subtract 32 and store that in snow. So now each flake is going to be moving through that sine wave, the sine wave which is going to move it left and right at slightly different speeds. see some are a bit too slow, some are a bit too quick. The Y speeds aren't varied enough. Um, I think we need to slow it down a little bit. Um, but the trick is here that you never you never move it horizontally outside of the outside of the strip. They're only ever going to be um, moving down. In fact if I show you in the debug you'll see what I mean. If you look at a, a pixel, it, it always stays within the vertical red lines. It never moves outside the vertical red lines. So now it's just a matter of picking the right values for these. So I'm going to cheat again because I have spent some time doing this. So I, I, I kind of already have these values um, worked out. Uh, snow speed y, 96 plus 96. Snow speed 80 plus 80. Uh, yeah, see, I've done the sine wave the same way there. Uh, I've got a little bit more going on there, but I don't think I needed that. I think this is fine. So this was 80 times 80 for some reason. Um, and our Y speed. What was our Y speed again? I forgot what that was. <sighs> Sorry if I'm missing uh, alerts and stuff, guys, as well. I've, I've not been paying very much attention, unfortunately. Um, hopefully, I've not missed anything. I do have my... Oh, oh God, I didn't want to do that. I don't think well, I've done it now. Too late. Um, I do have my alert sounds on, so I, I'm hoping I haven't missed anything. Uh, snow 8080 speed 96 plus 96. Uh, okay, oh, that's still less than that. Okay, so that is a bit slower. And I think I have a lot more flakes on as well. I think that you'll find I've probably got uh, 10 flakes or something like that. Uh, so look, snow, max snow 12. Okay, so I've got 12 going on in here. I've only got five going on in here. There we go. It's probably going to look a bit better. Yeah, there we go. So the other thing I did. Uh, for the snow is it still looks a bit too fast in places for some reason and some of them are really really zigzagging down the screen so I'm going to change that um, the other thing I did was draw some of the pixels um, with two pixels I'll explain how I did that as well in a minute 
fact, I might go for a smoke in a second. Um, and when I come back, I will, I will try and try and fit them in. Um, let me just change. I want to change the speed, the horizontal speed. I think it's just a little bit too quick. Um, let's half it and see what that does. Uh, a lot of this is tweaking until you find the right values. So. You can see I've still got the, the splash animation on here. Uh, so I should... Oh. All right, Jerry. Thanks for the host there, Jerry. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. I do love that animation. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, how have you done that, Hayes? What the hell? Wait a minute. I... <laughs> What? What? I'm, I'm confused how you've done that. <laughs> I'm confused how you've done that. It's really cool. I like it. So you've obviously got... So snowy. Okay. You've unlocked some emote. Update thing, that's really cool. I like it. <laughs> that's crazy. All right, I'm gonna go for a quick smoke. When I come back, I'll show you how we can, um, how we can create some of the flakes to have two pixels and then make them kind of float down a little bit different. <laughs> All right, be right back, guys. And I'm back. How was the stream, then, guys? Paperboy hey, for three and a half hours, four and a half hours, one hour of pinball. Saturday, cart mode, each fifty switch player. Got to Friday alone. Uh, cool. You play it on the Amiga, I imagine. Doesn't count unless you're playing it on the on the Commodore. That's where the difficulty is. Actually, saying that the um, uh, the the arcade version is quite difficult as well. All right, I'm going to go and comment this platform out because it's kind of getting in the way. It's it's looking a bit weird, and then I'm going to show you how to make the the flakes kind of um, a little bit bigger in some cases. So let's start by just commenting out the uh, platform, which we don't need. Um, and let's add some extra properties in here. So we're going to add a snow size in. And the size is either going to be one or two. Um, so the way I'm gonna just gonna do that is by making it zero or one in here. So, and then what we need, and I'm gonna go and copy this because I I worked this out and I can't be bothered working it out again. Um, I only need the first half of this. I'm not using the second half. Is these flake rotate values? I don't. I only need the first two. I don't know. I need to get rid of those in the other actually. And what this is, uh, is the offsets for the pixels. So you can see the first pixel is always at zero. I can probably make this smaller actually. You probably don't even need the first value because they're always zero. So. Thank you for the follow, Cracky Pop. Welcome to the stream. Um, so yeah, basically, if you draw a pixel, if you draw the first pixel, this is the offset for the second pixel, and it's designed so that 
if you draw a pixel at this side, it, the next pixel will look like this. If you draw a pixel at that side, the next pixel will be there. If the pixel is there, then it will be like that. And then it will be like that, and then like that, and so on. So that the flake kind of rocks from side to side. Um, and the way we do that is when we plot one pixel, uh, we need to plot another pixel if the value, uh, which I need to get the speed value, the size value, sorry. So size, comma, x, small only will be here. If it's small only then we don't need to draw the second pixel. Otherwise what we need to do is we need to add these these values. Um, so I'm trying to think how to do this. Uh, take the y value and we add I think the easiest way to do this, yeah. So flake rotate y plus one. Yeah, I really don't need that first byte in here. I don't know why I've done it the other way. I might have I might have written the routine slightly differently, but it should should do the same thing. Uh, and then before we transfer it to the accumulator, we just need to make sure that it wraps correctly. So um, if it's plus uh, we can go to here, uh, we'll call this store, uh, store y. If it's minus, however, we've wrapped through the top, so we need to add um, we need to add our strip uh, length times 8, jump to store y. If it's positive, we need to check it against this value. If it's less than that, we can go to store y. Otherwise, we need to subtract our strip length from it here. And then we store the y. And then we need to do the same with the x as well. So, um, so we add Actually, this I'm definitely going to get rid of this. Don't need this. So I'm going to change this to simple one, two, three, four, five, six, zero, like so. And this should be one, one, zero, 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 two, five, five, two, five, 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 five so. And this would be flight rotate y. Uh, I need this value here. Shit. Uh, I'm going to store that in the y register for now. Y. Plate rotate is making me one. Uh, did I try to copy the pattern here from Creatures 2 graphics? The copy the pattern. I tried to, yeah, I tried to do something similar to the Creatures 2 graphics. I think what they've done though is they've actually got animated flakes, so they've actually created an animation. I wanted to do it kind of mathematically rather than uh, doing it doing it um, with, with with graphical animations. Um, just because I'm lazy and I'm not an artist, so it was easier to do it like this. Um, okay, blah, blah. Oh, instead of storing it directly in there, I'm going to push it onto the stack. Um, and then before we plot, I'm going to... Like so. 
because um, I need to keep this Y value uh, available. So now I need to do the same with float rotate X. Uh, this time it's a little bit uh, simpler. I still need the branchy plus here. Uh, store X will actually be just transfer it to transfer it to X like so. Oh wait, hang on. Uh, I need to undo some of this. Damn it! Let me undo, 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 undo. Oh damn it! Never mind. I'll work it out again. Right. So I need to go back to what we were doing before. So. Yeah, it's that value I need. Sorry, that's and this would be store X. This is the value I need here, not this. So pull accumulator. So back to Y. Yeah. Okay, right. Sorry, I made a bit of a mess of that. So I need to take my X value, I need to add my flake rotate. Uh, if it's positive, it's fine. Otherwise, I need to add, this time I'm just adding eight, um, because it's always eight wide, we'll store X. Otherwise, I need to compare with eight, uh, and if it's less, go to store X. Otherwise, I need to subtract eight. Seems like a lot of code without without really thinking about it, but let's, let's give it, oh, no, massive crash. What have I done there? It's probably to do with the pushes and pulls to the stack that I've done here. Uh, okay, so I pushed this file into the stack, got it back there, correct. Store Y should be push here, that's what I've done wrong. Because then I pull it back here, yeah, okay. Now we should have pixels. It's not quite working right. So the double ones, when they move, I slowed up in the, the debugger, it's easier to see in there. What the? Oh, where to go, debugger? I've definitely found the debugger to be a bit buggier <laughs> recently. Um, I can never remember which button to press now. It wasn't that, was it? Uh, which one is it? There we go. Let's just slow it down a little bit. Let's try and find. There's a double. So as it moves across to this side, it should. Yeah, it's nice. It's doing all sorts of weird things here. They should be changing in size, and they're not doing. I'm well, not changing in size, but changing in shape. Okay. So what have I done wrong here? This has become quite a messy piece of code. I don't like it at all. Uh. Actually, there's a right. Let's do this. Let's work this bit out again. I, I'm not keen on. I'm not keen on all of that. So let's do it again. Basically, we've plotted one pixel. 
the second pixel needs to be at this location if there is two. Um, let me just undo equal small only small only is there we need to get rid of all that we do need to put a pixel in the end So let's get rid of all that right. So we need to set the X and the Y. The X and the Y are set already in here. Uh, at this point. So when we come out of here, the X and the Y are actually already set. So I'm gonna create some two more temps. I'm just gonna call it temp X. You would probably do this in zero page normally, but um, I'm just going to do it here. Just I'm not worried about raster time because I don't have anything else going on. So uh, temp Y. Uh, sorry, not that one. Temp X. So we have our X position and we have our Y position. And so we just need to update those here. So we're going to use our X position as our index into the array. Uh, we're going to update that by adding flake rotate X using X as the index. Uh, clearing the carry bit. Plus, we go to here. Uh, I'll call that done x instead. Otherwise, if it's minus, we need to add 8 to it. Oh, is it not scrolling? Stupid thing. Jump done x. And here we do the check. Uh, uh, so X. Uh, otherwise, we need to subtract eight. And if we've done eight, we'll store X. Uh, store the accumulator in temp X. We'll keep the X register as it is, and now we'll do the Y. So we do the same again. We load a value in, in this case, temp Y. Um, we'll pretty much do exactly the same as this, but with some value changes here. So if it's plus, we do the same again. Otherwise, we add strip length times eight. As we compare it to strip length times a and jump to there, don't know why. There we go. And we could store that in temp y, but there's no point in it, so I'll just transfer it directly to y. Load x with temp x, plot the pixel. There we go. And it's failed. Temp y. Show up a case. There we go. That still doesn't look quite right for some reason. <laughs> it works really well with the techno stream. That's oh, what's going on there? That's it. This it did too. Oh, I'm actually managing to crash out the the debugger. What? Oops. Oh, weird. 
Apparently, if you run it slow enough, it it will uh, crash. Uh, okay. Still not drawing them quite right for some reason. It's not adding. But just to show you what, what I mean, what I'm trying to achieve, let's load the game up. This doesn't have that problem at all. Oops. Oh no, it's going to crash. So apparently, if you load in this mode and have it slow, it will crash, which is very weird. got so much more buggy this thing really has oh what is going on no no try again really doesn't want to load that for some reason Fun, 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 seriously. What is going on? Let's try it manually. Ah, not enough alcohol in my system, good point. There we go. Well, I'll, I'll show you with the. Um, not through that. I'll, I'll show you just normal. You'll have to see if you can see what's going on. I'll, I'll try and slow it down so you can actually see. Um, so, what's the speed setting in here? I remember how to slow it down. I'll set it to 20%. So, if you see the ones that are two pixels wide, as they reach the edge, they do this nice kind of curve pattern which is what I'm trying to do but I've, I've obviously done something wrong somewhere I have taken a slightly different approach with the way I've done the effects in the game um, but it is the same end result uh, apart from this this bit that isn't working quite right um, but the the way I'm doing it in, in the game is, is ever so slightly different I think um, but it shouldn't shouldn't be that different in terms of the the result at the end. Should add the Y, add the X. Flake rotate X, flake rotate Y. Yep, should all be fine. I'm on that side, then I go down one, down and across one, just across, just across, up and up. Oh wait, hang on, been a numpty. Uh, yeah, that's better. I just had the wrong index here. There we go. And now that you see they're, they're floating down a little bit better now. So the ones that are two pixels are actually swaying backwards and forwards the desired effect and that whole effect is done in this many raster lines it's really 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 cheap um, so you can you can do all sorts of things to try and improve it so I can go up to 16 um, I can add 16 objects in this is going to be quite a dense um, not very repetitive storm uh, actually that doesn't look dense at all Object count 16. 
That really doesn't look dense. Why has it only done that many? Let's just do one. Make sure that actually is doing something. It has four songs on a loop. I don't have four songs on loop. I have, I have ten hours. It's just it's always the same stuff. I need to I need to change it anyway. I keep trying to figure out how to get the ultimate to play uh, tunes in a random order. So you can see if you put just one flake in, because you're only animating one flake, you can obviously see that it's it's the same flake all over the screen. The pattern that it's laid out in is different, but the, the flake is just repeated all over the screen. Um, what, what happens if I do like 32? It should be extremely dense. Yeah, it is. There we go. So you can increase density in two ways. You can reduce the strip size. So if I reduce that down to four, that density is, is almost going to be just uh, just snowflakes and nothing else. Um, but obviously the pattern starts repeating more often. The longer you have the strip, the less dense it will be. So the more objects you'll need to make it dense, um, but the less repetitive it gets. So you can probably pick a nice happy ground somewhere in the middle. Like that, there you go. I would say the left and right top speed is probably a bit too high in some cases. Let's change that a little bit. So the top speed is this one here, our X speed. Um, so it goes from 40 uh, to 80, roughly. Oh, 40 times random times 40. What the hell? 40 plus random times 40. Jesus. No wonder that was weird. Uh, it's still a bit too much of a repeating pattern, so I'm going to actually increase the length to 12. The density will go down a little bit, but it should look a bit less, less repetitive as well. What about having the snow flying to the right aggressively? So that's the this is the downside of this uh, this technique is that you're stuck with. Uh, strips down the screen so the only way you can make this move to the left and right is if you scroll the whole screen now you could if you were just doing um, just snow on the screen and nothing else you could use screen scrolling you could use a VSP effect or something like that to move all the snow across very quickly um, however you generally you're going to be using this with other stuff on the screen so it is difficult to, to add extra stuff in uh, keep the raster lines visible so as more snow falls, the raster increases and look like looks like it's settling. That's not a bad idea. You could do that, yeah. So if we were to, for instance, get rid of this raster here uh, and change this this value in here. Uh, so if we make this uh, F A, uh, and here we do. And then at the end we we put the value back again. Um, and then we decrease this value. So if I if I give this a I'll just give this another label, call it S mod again. Um, and then here, if I put if I just put a random byte in here, if I call it a counter, uh, and what I do is I do decrease counter, branch if not equal, skip over. Otherwise, what I will do is I will decrease s mod minus one, uh, sorry, plus one. So I slowly decrease every five seconds, this line is going to move up. set the wrong colour. So we just leave this, we should start seeing it moving up. I mean it's obviously using a very shitty raster effect to do this. If you're gonna do this properly you would 
uh, you'd use an actual raster in Thrill rather than just a comparison as it goes. But yeah, I mean this this has the sort of effect you're on about, I guess. Oh, I'm completely out of wine. That's really frustrating. Um, hmm. Yeah, you see, it's flickering because it because it's not a proper raster interrupt. It's kind of getting confused sometimes. So um, sometimes it's it's not triggering at the right point. Normally, we'd do a proper raster interrupt for this. So one of the things I'm going to try and do soon in my game, um, I'm going to load the game up again and show you what, what I intend on doing. Uh, so it was actually something Vinny said from 364 about getting the raindrops to splash on the heads of the characters. So I've shown how that works. Um, but I want to do a similar thing with the snow. Now, I can't use the splash thing because snow doesn't really splash, it builds up, right? So, the way I'm going to do this, um, there's two things I can do. Firstly, these these blocks here, I can have these slowly fill in with white from the top. They're already white, but I can have them fill in and cover this grey area so these look like they're, they're filling up with snow. Um, but the other thing I can do is if you notice the player's got like a little dust animation when he lands so what I'm gonna do is when the player is on the ground and the dust animation isn't playing anymore um, and the player isn't moving I'm gonna draw a sprite over the top and that sprite is gonna slowly build up with white I'm gonna use a bell curve so it's gonna it's gonna build up more in the middle uh, and create a kind of dome on his head with some of it overlapping over the bottom and it will just keep on doing that up to a certain point but then when you move, the moment you move, that sprite will start moving down the screen, but also disintegrating, so it'll look like the snow's falling off you as you go, so. You know what construction clip is quite limited, yeah. Uh, yeah, Shimo construction kit's pretty good. There, there's some really good modifications of that, actually. That, um, uh, is it Richard Bayliss, I think? The TND guy? has done loads of work with that. He works quite a lot with Alf Junger, for whatever his name is, uh, to do, uh, to make modifications. So uh, they can make it um, scroll sideways and all, all sorts of things. It's, um, it's pretty handy. Oops. Yep. Okay. Well, I think that's about it, guys. Um, there's not really much more I can do um, in the time we've got. I, I will. Should I put this code up like this? Uh, I think I will. I mean, it's you've got the stream to follow if you wanna. Uh, if you wanna go through what each bit means, um, and I'm always available on on Discord as well um, to help you if you need it. This isn't the neatest code in the world. Um, it never is when we do something kind of live like this on stream. Um, and I've had to kind of pull it out of my memory mostly um, with a few things I've cheated and taken from my original code, like these flake rotates, which I'm actually going to trim down in my other code because it's a bit messy. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's two effects there. It's taken probably about two kilobytes or so of RAM um, to do that and considering there's a lot of unrolled loops in there and um, also this depends on on these things here as well so if I change the size of these then then the memory will get less so like if I reduce the snow and reduce the strip length a little bit um, actually what was that it was 12 so if I reduce by a quarter on each one I should get roughly the same density, but I'm using a little bit less memory. So you can tweak those values um, to your liking, really. But yeah, I think that's it. I think I'm going to call it a night there. I'm going to find someone to raid. If I can remember how to actually do things. Uh, let's have a look.
Who have we got on uh, my channel? Let's have a look. Ah, Neon Ninja Monkey's on. Let's let's raid him. Change them to two hundred. Change what to two hundred? What the <laughs> the number of snow particles? That would be kind of insane. Um, yeah, I, I will post this code onto GitHub straight after the stream. Um, do with it what you please. Um, I'd be interested to see if anybody could come up with um, new effects using it. There's a lot of potential for doing doing things there. It's essentially just plotting and removing pixels, uh, and occasionally clearing it as well. Um, there's a lot of scope for doing stuff, so it'd be kind of cool if anybody can come up with a new one. Um, yeah, and I will see you guys. I'm, I'm actually, I'm not going to be streaming on Saturday because I'm out again, unfortunately. Uh, I may do something when I come back, depending on how drunk I am. But it's not going to be, it's not going to be the normal game stream. I want to, I want to get a good kind of solid five or six hours on that in one go. Um, so you may see me this this weekend, but it won't be the normal game stream. But I'll be back on Thursday and Saturday the following week uh, as normal. Um, right, guys. Thanks for coming along. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I shall see you all again next time. Cheerio.